you're no longer a liar. You're no longer Jacob. Now you're a prince with God. The only time God calls people a prince is when they're putting their full weight on him. Praying in the flesh uses your own strength. And that kind of prayer keeps you, forgive me, a liar. Did you hear what I just said? Then everything you utter is a lie. I need you. Help me. Forgive me. It's a lie. But the minute you quit praying in the flesh, you can't wrestle anymore. You're leaning on him. He says, now, I've just changed your name. Now you're Israel. You're a prince with God. That is the man of the spirit God is looking for. He's not looking for the man who knows how to wrestle. He's looking for the man who knows how to lean, how to depend on the Lord. The Bible does not teach independence. It teaches dependence total reliance, surrender to the Lord. When you come to that place in prayer and the Holy Ghost is there, you'll surrender. Everything of the flesh surrenders. Now the flesh dies. And next thing you know, everything you're doing is born by heaven. Heaven begins to, 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 to uh, heavenly things begin to become reality. And faith, which is heavenly, becomes reality. Now you don't have to convince yourself that God said it. Everything becomes tangible, substance, powerful, because the spirit of life is there. Now there's life. The spirit of prayer is there. There's prayer. The spirit of faith is there. There's faith. None of it is you. Now you say, amen, and your prayer has already affected not only just heaven, but the destiny of millions. And tomorrow morning you wake up, and you think you're going to get right back into it, but the whole process begins all over again. Because the flesh cannot handle Staying in the spirit too long. Please listen to what I said. These bodies are not made to live in the spirit 24 hours a day. Now there is a place where this body can last for a long period. It depends really on the call of God on your life. You may lose what I'm about to give you. I, I, I hope and pray you don't. Are you ready for this? Lord, help me say it with clarity. Very few men in the Bible lived in the Spirit 24 hours a day. Very few men. And those that did, did not know sickness for one second. Why do you think Moses, why was he the kind of man he was? Why was it at the age of 120, he was as strong as when he was 40? No sickness touched his body. Sickness cannot invade that realm called in the spirit. John lived in the spirit, and he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and that didn't mean he was just in the spirit only on that day. He was really saying to you, this is my experience, this is my life. And he was the kind of man who so lived in the spirit that history says they tried to boil his body in hot oil and didn't touch him. He was in a different realm. Jesus lived in the spirit. Sickness never touched him. Of course, as the Son of God, he was sinless. But never forget, 
he came in the flesh. Paul the apostle lived in the spirit. Elijah lived in the spirit. Elisha lived in the spirit. Few men really in the Bible that you, you, you and I can talk about who are examples to us. Therefore, it's possible. And it, in fact, James talks about it's possible because he uses Elijah of like passion, he says. God has that place for you if you want it. Now, precious people, I know in this day and age, it's, you think it's impossible, but really it isn't. There is a place for every believer. I, uh, when, when, when I was introduced to this life, I was amazed by some of the things that happened to me. The Holy Spirit, His presence, even though his presence is always there, but there is that tangible substance of the presence of Jesus that you know what I mean. The Lord did not lift that tangible presence from me for one year. That's how this ministry was born. I probably slept two, three hours a night. It never affected my body. I had strength I, I cannot describe to you. I woke up in the morning with God's glory in that, in that room. Night after night after night after night, you, you get into a realm that is almost unknown to most Christians. It's, it's in that realm God is more real than anything around you. I 